is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. We welcome one and all of you this morning. We welcome you to our service of worship. A couple of announcements uh, on the inside back cover. There are several. There's an announcement about Easter flowers. Uh, the order forms are towards the back of the sanctuary. If you'd like to purchase an Easter lily, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. Also, you'll notice as you walked in today in our coat room outside, there's the Mother Hubbard's food pantry. You're welcome to bring some items. March is food share month, and so we're asking you to bring items for that particular food shelf, and uh, we'll distribute that. Or actually, Norm does a lot, uh, great job of distributing that to different food pantries in our community. So we are grateful and invite your participation in that offering as well. Our call to worship this morning is a bit different. It's based on Psalm 100, where we as the congregation will be reading Holy Scripture, and then I as the worship leader will uh, follow up. So... Um, let us uh, use our call to worship. You'll need to have the screen in front of you or the bulletin in front of you because we are reading Scripture together. Let us uh, call ourselves into worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Bring your silence and your shouting as introverts and extroverts. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Bring your songs and your stories, your struggles and your sacrifices. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. God designed and created us, understands us and is intensely interested in us. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. Bring your gifts and your personalities, your strengths and weaknesses. Let us pray. Holy God, you bring manna from heaven and provisions for our daily needs. Guide us in our worship that we would be grateful for your gifts and led by your Holy Spirit. In Christ's name we pray together. Amen. Don't you just love the second verse in that? Uh, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Bring your songs and your stories, your struggles and your sacrifices. <clears throat> well, we're not singing quite yet, um, but I don't think it would be inappropriate if you guys are looking at the words in the, uh, in the hymn and you mumble them under your mask. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> For the mystic harmony, 
linking sense to sound and sight. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our head of grateful fall short of the glory of God by what we do and what we fail to do. Let us confess our sins to God by using the prayer printed in the bulletin and on the screen. Merciful God, we pray for daily bread and want so much more. We pray for our necessities and yet we seek more than we ask. Forgive us Guide us to be grateful for everything we need to do for our conditions. Hear the good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. In Jesus Christ, we have been forgiven. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us stand to share that wonderful peace of Christ with our neighbors.
Let us pray. God of all wisdom, grant that in the reading and interpreting of your holy holy word that we may hear what you have to say to us. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Old Testament lesson is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16. Here, God provides for the people even as they wondered what God was giving them. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the Israelite community, come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. The word of the Lord. I would like to invite the children to come forward for the time with young disciples, if you will. We'll spread out down here. And while the children are coming forward, I want you to turn around and look at Jay Espelin and John Scott for a moment. For some of you, I'm not about embarrassing. I'm not going to embarrass them. Some of you, this is your first Sunday back to church or maybe second Sunday. Those are the two primary people who helped put online worship together for us. They deserve a round of applause. They did a great job. Well, they're still doing a great job for us. Kids, if you want to come down for the children's time, you're welcome to do so. Come on down. Why don't you stand along here, and I'll stand up on the chancel so I'm a distance away from you. Okay, spread out a little bit. You guys don't have to, but you do. Okay, all right. 
Um, what do you see on the communion table there in front of you? Bread. What kind do you like? Do you like white or wheat? White? What? I'm with you. Who's, let's do a poll of the big kids, okay? I, I think I know what they're going to say. How many like white bread? White bread, white bread. Look at those kids over there. Um, white bread. How many like wheat bread? Look at there. There we go. Okay, it doesn't matter, does it? It's all good, right? What do you, what do you use bread for? What? Hot dogs? What else? Sandwiches? What kind of sandwiches? Peanut butter and jelly? Do you like that one? No? What, what kind of sandwich do you like? Okay. Ham, ham sandwiches, cheese, maybe. There's all different kinds of things you can do with bread. Um, uh, today we're going to talk about, in the Lord's Prayer, we say, give us today our daily bread. That's for you. Um, that's for you. Uh, we're going to talk about the bread that God gives us, okay? And we say a prayer in the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. And we're going to talk about that as we, now I'm not going to say it as fast as I just did, but I want you to remember the next time you have a sandwich that it's the daily bread that God provides. Where else do we have bread in church? Communion, yep, the Lord's Supper when we hand out those little bread wafers sometimes, that's the bread that we're talking about as well. Give us this day our daily bread. So, I want you to remember, next time you eat a sandwich, you can take that one too, um, that we're praying for Thanksgiving for the bread that God provides. All right? Would the big kids help us as we pray? Holy God, thank you for today. Thank you for, today. Thank you for the bread you give. Thank you for the bread In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Stop for a second here. Do you guys know why I'm standing this far apart from you? Right, okay. I just want to make sure you know that because normally I would go up, come up and hug you or give you a fist. That's what I'm trying to protect you and protect me. So have a wonderful day. Be well. You can go back to your seats now. The gospel lesson today is from the gospel according to John chapter 6, beginning at verse 35 and then skipping down to verse 41. Jesus is referencing himself as the bread of heaven or actually the bread of life here. He does reference Himself as the bread of heaven. We'll get to that in just a moment. Here again, God's Word to us. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to Me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in Me will never be thirsty. And then in verse 41, Then the Jews began to complain about Jesus because He said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is this... Is not this Joseph, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has been heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone who has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give you for the life of the world is my flesh. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to reflect on your word. 
may we do so in a way that lifts up the gospel and loves our neighbor at the same time. May those things said that are true today be engraved upon every heart. May those things said that are false or even a bit misleading be quickly forgotten and cause no harm. Together we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. Some have suggested that this portion of the Lord's Prayer is ancient. In fact, most of us, if we needed a loaf of bread, could go almost anywhere in our city and find a loaf of bread and have enough money to pay for it. So this portion of the Lord's Prayer may seem ancient, archaic, but for millions in the world, it is a petition that draws them closer to God. Today we continue our sermon series on the Lord's Prayer. We're looking at the Lord's Prayer phrase by phrase in order that we might slow down and reflect on what God is saying to us in this prayer. We've prayed it hundreds of times, thousands maybe, and yet I want us to slow down just a bit that we might reflect on the phrases. The first Sunday we looked at, our Father who art in heaven, how we address God matters, how we understand that God is distant from us and yet close to us matters. Hallowed be thy name was the second sermon. This understanding that God's name is revered above all names. No matter where we're at in this life and what we're doing, God's name is to be revered. Set apart from every other name. And last week we looked at the third. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done that God's will is done in our lives. As Jesus Himself said, yet not what I want, but what you want. It's a great prayer for us to pray every day. Not what you want, God. Not what I want, God, but what you want. So the first half of the prayer are petitions that are directed to God. The second half of the Lord's Prayer are petitions that we request. And they're petitions that matter, that are holy, that are life-giving, that are important, and it's why I want us to slow down a bit. Give us this day our daily bread. The person who took this probably, uh, who is renowned for this portion of the prayer is the Reverend George Mueller. He was a a theologian, evangelist, Christian educator, but he he was well known for the way that he took care of orphans in England during the 1800s. To his credit, there were approximately 10,000 orphans who went through his orphanages. There were many times, legend has it, that he did not know where the morning meal was going to come from. At one point, two stories I'll share. At one point in the morning, they gathered for breakfast with no food. And George began to pray, Lord, we thank you for the food that we are about to partake. The kids were looking around thinking, where on earth is the food? Here came the food. Another story is written by a gentleman who was a friend of George Mueller's. That night, George said to him, I want you to pray for our daily bread. Our cupboards are bare. We do not know where the morning meal is coming from. This gentleman thought it was rather strange. George had been working at this for years. He said to himself, he's literally praying for his daily bread. They went to bed not knowing what was going to happen. They woke up to almost a cornucopia of food. A local baker in town had brought 
what the gentleman later wrote was about two months' supply of food. The prayer matters. And it's important for us to understand that. The prayer still matters. There are four principles I want to go over as I reflect on this text. I'm going to get to the text a little bit later. Four principles that I think help us in this understanding of this part of the prayer. When we pray this prayer, we are praying that God provides for our physical needs. Now, that seems obvious, right? Give us this day our daily bread. We look at the loaf of bread. Okay, pastor, we got that one. But if you read the Scriptures, that was not always obvious. In fact, when you get to the New Testament, 1 Peter says, cast all your anxiety upon Him because He cares for you. God cares about your physical needs and what happens to your body. Jesus was enfleshed in body. Jesus Himself fed multitudes of people. I'll get to that in a moment. Frederick Buechner once said, man does not live on bread alone, but it doesn't take long before it runs out. It's a great line. So, the other point I want to make about this, this, these physical needs that we have is this idea that Secondly, when we are praying this prayer, we're praying for real bread. Don't don't overlook that for a moment. We are praying for real bread in the Lord's Prayer. Now, early church fathers started to come alongside the church and, and began to think, well, maybe it's a spiritual kind of bread. In fact, the Gospel of John kind of hints at that. The Reformers came along and said, no, no. We're praying for real bread. The idea of spiritualizing the bread, John Calvin once said, was his words, absurd. It's real bread that we're reflecting upon. Third guiding principle for this part of the prayer When we pray this part of the prayer, we are expressing a dependence upon God for the essentials of life. It's not just bread. The theologian Martin Luther came along and said, the daily bread represents all of the nourishment that we need, the shelter, the clothing, the relationships even, he mentioned. It's why some of the early church fathers thought it was more of a spiritual matter. John Calvin would have none of that. But it represents all of the nourishment that we need. Everything that nourishes our body, Martin Luther said. Fourth guiding principle. It's this idea that when we pray this prayer, that it represents a prayer for all of God's children. Notice the prayer doesn't say, give me this day my daily bread. That's not how the prayer goes. Give us, plural, this day our, plural, daily bread. And it's why so many churches have food ministries for people who are dealing with food insecurity. We have, I tried to count them all yesterday or earlier this week. The first, second, Tuesday, second Monday of the month, we have a nutrition assistance program for senior, seniors. We hand out boxes of food in conjunction with Catholic Charities. They hand out more food. Fact Pack, we've helped them over the years. They provide back food for backpacks for kids over the weekend. Delivering meals at home, we're not doing that right now because of COVID, but we do that. Mother Hubbard's Cupboard, you can donate to that just about any time you want. 
one great hour of sharing offering, a third of that will go to Presbyterian Hunger Program, where we teach people how to grow food around the world and we, we try to alleviate some hunger. And I've probably missed two or three. Oh, one person in our church, <laughs> it's amazing. He or she, I'm not going to say, gives me gift cards every month to hand out for groceries. Like, amazing. Because we take this prayer seriously. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, when you look at the two texts today, the Old Testament and the New Testament, I want you to turn, if you have your Bibles in front of you, or go to your bullets in Exodus 16. Verse 18, so the backdrop of the text is they didn't know where, where their food was coming from and God is providing manna from heaven for them. Verse 18 says, but when they measured this product or this manna with an omer, those who gathered much had nothing over and those who gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them, here it is, needed. Give us this day our daily bread. This is not a luxury. This is what we need. Now, where did the early church fathers get the idea that this bread was spiritualized? Well, you go to our gospel lesson today, John chapter 6. Jesus has fed the multitudes of crowds. He's concerned about their physical needs. It's real bread. He feeds them. But then he goes on to say, I am the bread of life. If you think what I gave you is important, I'm even more important. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. That's where I think the early church theologians got that idea. But be careful here. In Matthew chapter 6, the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus teaches us to pray, there's no indication it's spiritual bread. It's the real stuff. And that's why the Reformers came along and said, wait a minute. Jesus is both and. He's the bread of heaven, but He also provides our daily physical needs. I want to go down to verse 47 of the text. Very truly, or amen, I tell you, whoever believes in me has eternal life. I am the bread of life. And here he's referencing the Old Testament. He says, your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. It's why some of our people think of this as spiritual bread. There are a couple of things I want you to do when you reread today's text. I always ask you to reread the text on your own. You, I don't have to only be the sole interpreter. The Holy Spirit can instruct you as well. I want you to pay attention to verse 18 of Exodus 16. As much as they had need, excuse me, as much as everyone needed. Friends, I don't want to be too political here. There's enough bread to go around in the world. And I'm thinking of famines in Yemen, in parts of the Middle East, and most of, not most of Africa, parts of Africa. There's enough bread to go around. And I know there's political tension. I know all about that. I know that some dictators don't always distribute it properly. But I think God says to us, give us this day our daily bread. We have a responsibility 
to help. And I, I know there's enough to go around. And we can do our part. And the beautiful thing is you're already doing it. I don't have to nudge you in the right direction at all. You're already doing this. And I'm grateful for you for doing that. So first part, when you reread, I want you to focus on verse 18. And then I want you to ask yourself, where is God nudging me in this part of my life? For some, you might be praying for your daily bread. And if that's the case, that's fine and appropriate. But for others, it might be that God is nudging you to give your daily bread to someone else. And how best can we do that together? So there's a reflection on the text, verse 18. There's also a nudge by the Spirit, telling us to help where we can, guiding us along the path. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for our daily bread. It is in abundance that we have it, and we are grateful. May we do our part to share it with those who are in need. May we reflect on the text in ways that honor Jesus Christ who is in our midst. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Our affirmation of faith is from the shorter catechism of the Westminster Confession. The Westminster Confession, the shorter catechism, has questions and answers. I will pray the, excuse me, I will uh, say the question if you will, uh, if we will together respond accordingly. Question 104 of the Catechism says this, What do we pray for in the fourth petition? In the fourth petition, which is, Give us this day our daily bread. We pray that of God's free gift, we may receive a competent portion of the good things of this life and enjoy His blessing with them. Um, Offering plates are located at the front and back of our sanctuary. As a reminder, we do not send around these plates, but metaphorically they are passed around all the time by what we give to God. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for your generosity in our lives. Guide us to be generous in word and deed by what we give and the compassion we show for others. Amen. Our prayers of the people are shaped uh, by a couple of deaths. We remember the family of Susan Chop. Her service of witness to the resurrection was here yesterday, and we continue to pray for Mike and his family. We also pray for the family of Larry Kelsey, a friend of the congregation. We ask for God's blessing upon his family. Uh, We continue to pray for Linda Atticott. Linda is currently hospitalized at the St. Cloud Hospital, and so we continue to pray for her. And also Chet Buckley. Chet fell recently and broke several ribs. Um, He is at um, Country Manor Rapid Recovery, and so we offer prayers for Chet today as well. Uh, Are there other prayer requests that you'd like to offer up, prayers that I have forgotten, joys, or concerns? Let us pray. to your peace lead us to your peace where hunger and oppression cease lead us to your Gracious and loving God, in this sacred moment of worship from spaces all across this world, where we have gathered in your name, we call upon your spirit this day. We ask that you would soften our hearts, open our minds, direct our steps, that we might more closely follow you. In this season of wandering in these 40 days of Lent, we are thankful that we journey together. We give thanks for those in our lives, seen and unseen, near and far, that walk this road with us, partners, loved ones, friends, and even strangers that pray for us. 
And more than anything, when our route seems to lead straight into the wilderness, when we've still got a ways to go, we take heart in, in you, our Savior. You know the way. You've been there before. You have conquered it, and you come alongside and meet us here. We are not alone. We are not alone. With every breath, through every storm, we are not We pray for the thousands across our land and across the globe who continue to fight for their very basic human rights, for the simple dignity they are owed as your children. We grieve for them and pray for their quick delivery of freedoms they deserve. For the many who are sick, who battle illness and infirmity, we pray for comfort and healing. For those who are tired and at a loss, we pray for wisdom and direction. For those who celebrate today, we, we celebrate with them. We welcome those who return to worship today. We are grateful for their presence here. In all these things, in every whispered prayer, in every need your children offer today, we ask that our words not be empty, our sentiments not be complicit, that your spirit in us not be quenched. Compassionate Savior, sometimes life is overwhelming. And when morale threatens to break us, when our unbelief becomes too great, bring us back to you. Bring us back to your comfort and grace. May we indeed experience peace that surpasses all understanding. We pray all these things in Christ's name who taught us together to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another. To walk humbly with God. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand for the blessing and benediction. A reminder as you leave today that there, uh, the food pantry is downstairs. As you just enter into the west entry there, you're welcome to donate to that uh, uh, cause as well. If you'd like to learn more about our congregation or simply want someone to pray with, Ryan will be up here after our service. Receive now the benediction. And now may the blessing and mercy of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Together God's people rejoicedly say, Amen. Amen.